Hi guys, it's Claire Rose here again and today I'm going to be taking part in the book to net All-Star Challenge. This is a challenge created by Rachel Marie. I will be leaving links to her original video and all of the information down below. This was started as a way for the booktube community and just the bookie community in general to be able to in some small way contribute to the fight against COVID-19. In order to do this, Rachel started this challenge and for every person who completes the challenge, she will donate one euro to the charity pot and, and at the end of the challenge time, so I think it's at the end of May, she will choose one random winner who will choose a COVID-19 charity to donate that money to. This is, this is up to a total of 75 euros, which I think is more than generous from one booktuber alone to donate that much money. There is also the opportunity for anybody else who wants to donate to this um, allotted amount they can do so as well. All of that information I will leave below so that you can donate if you feel able to do so. Obviously, don't feel forced into it or pressured into it if you cannot afford that. It's just for those of us who do feel able to do so. This challenge is very, very simple. We just get a list of Booktonet's all-stars, sort of the authors and the book series that you hear about all the time on Booktube and on Instagram and they're ones that it seems like everybody and their mother has read and has an opinion about and it's just to see how many of them have you read did you enjoy them if you have read them what are your reasons for not reading them if not it's all just a bit of fun I would say that um, my opinions may differ quite a bit from some of the like standard popular opinions so my apologies if they don't match up with yours it's just my personal opinion and if I dislike a book series that you love or I have no interest in a book series that you love that's absolutely fine we're different people the world is made up of different people and it would be boring if we all like the same things starting off we have Angie Thomas who is the author of The Hate You Give and On The Come Up I have heard a lot about these books obviously I am interested to at some point give The Hate You Give a try um, just because the content seems so important, so very, very relevant. It's all about the police brutality, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, racism in particular in America, but it's a relevant um, topic worldwide. Definitely would like to give it a go for that reason. I haven't read it yet and I am ever so slightly hesitant to pick it up purely because it's one of those things that everybody seems to universally love it and they seem to say it's such a well-written book, but part of me worries that, yes, the content is so relevant, it's so important, it's such a big topic that needs to be tackled, but I do worry if maybe it was just the right book at the right time, and what if I don't like the writing style of that book? What if I can't get along with it? Um, not the content or the subject matter or any of the messages it's trying to portray, but just the pure writing style itself. And that's what's putting me off picking it up a little bit. On the Come Up, um, again, it's a very popular book, but I have less interest in that. The content doesn't intrigue me so much. I know a lot of it is about rap music and this girl trying to make it in the rap scene. And that just doesn't appeal to me. Rap music is not my genre at all. And just books about music and songs and lyrics in them, it's not really for me. Next, Tahira Murphy, who wrote the Shatter Me series. This is a series that was going on when I first joined Booktube years ago. I seem to remember it being about then, and I have never picked up a copy of it. I've seen it available several times in like bind-ups where you could get the original trilogy or more of the series in one go, and for quite cheap as well. And I could have bought them, but I just never have. I really don't think this book series is for me. It sounds like it's too romance heavy for me to be interested in it and also I just feel that the boat has gone for me on this the ship has sailed it's too far into the series too many books for me to now catch up on and I don't think that I would have the interest to do so even if I did attempt it I will say one thing about this series they have gorgeous covers I've always thought that the covers for these books are absolutely stunning third on the list is Lee Bardugo Another thing, I have never read a single Lee Bardugo book, which I know marks me out as very different from a lot of the booktube community. I just have never gotten around to that. The original Grisha trilogy, is it Shadow and Bone? Smoke and Bone? Something like that? That doesn't appeal to me 
for similar reasons that the Shatami series doesn't appeal to me. I feel it would be too much of a sort of stereotypical YA fantasy, quite romance heavy in places. Not something that I would be that interested in. The later series that she has put out, the duology, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, I have more interest in reading those. I would like to give those a go at some point and see how I get on with that. I've heard good things and I hear that they're quite good for diversity as well. I would also like to read Ninth House, which I believe is her adult novel, which is nothing to do with the Grisha verse and I believe is set at an American university. I forget which one, but it sounds really good. Dark academia, dark fantasy and an adult novel. I would like to give that a try. I know that that's got mixed opinions, but I think it's because people are so busy comparing it to her previous works or it's been read by people who love her previous works. And then for somebody to go to an adult novel, which is in a completely different setting, different universe, it's just not what they're enjoying. But because I have none of that baggage attached to me, I think it might be something that I would really enjoy. And then we get to the ever popular, ever talked about and seemingly universally loved or nearly universally loved The Cool Prince by Holly Black. I don't remember the full title name, but I know it's a trilogy. And I will say this, I have absolutely no interest in picking up this book series, none whatsoever. The The premise just really is not for me. It really bugs me. The whole sort of like bully romance aspect of it, the whole captive and captor relationship is not one that I am ever drawn to and not one that I really get on board with. This isn't me being morally judgmental. If it's what you like, fine, fair enough, you enjoy that. And I dare say there are books that I have read that have similar themes, which I have really enjoyed, but it's not one I gravitate towards. I have read Holly Black's other books before and really liked them. I read her original Fae series back when I was a teenager, the one that's got Tithe and is it Ironside? I forget the names. One of them's down here on the shelf behind me. I have also read, I don't know if you can see it, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, which is her vampire novel, standalone vampire novel. Loved it. Not perhaps the best written story ever, but it was fun and I really, really enjoyed it at the time. And that was fantastic. But Cool Prince, no, not for me. Never going to happen. Then we have the Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco. I have seen this book around and I am very intrigued. I don't know as much about it as the others on this list, but it looks really interesting. The cover is stunning. I know for a while that Audible had this book as a free download and I was tempted to get it then, but I couldn't really get it to work on my phone, which is the only thing that I would have to listen to it on. And I do want to pick this book up at some point. I'm very intrigued. I believe it's about magic and necromancy and it's quite a dark magic book. And I would really like to give it a go if it becomes available to me at some point. Next on the list, Victoria Schwab, also writing under V.E. Schwab. Never read a Victoria Schwab book. I want to. All of her series sound so intriguing. But it's at the point now where she has written so many series and trilogies and different writing styles that I don't know where to start. Somebody please tell me where to start with Victoria Schwab. What is the first Victoria Schwab book I should pick up? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to give it a go at some point. Next is Marissa Meyer, another author I have not read anything by. She is the author of the Lunar Chronicles series, which is a series of fairy tale retellings. It sounds like it should be quite up my street because I love fairy tales, particularly dark fairy tale retellings. I love them. This is a sci-fi retelling series. And again, I'm intrigued. I believe they'd be very easy reading. I don't think it would take me very long at all to get through them. But the romance aspect is again what's putting me off. I don't know if I would enjoy that aspect of these books. I mean, obviously, it's a very large part of a lot of the original fairy tales. So... I don't know, I'm on the fence with this one. I may give it a go at some point. Perhaps if I could borrow the first one from the library when the libraries reopen, or if a friend could lend me a copy, perhaps I would give it a go. Maybe I'd like it, but that one I'm sort of on a middle ground with. Next, Adam Silvera. Finally, an author whose book I have actually read. I have read one Adam Silvera book and loved it. I read History is All You Left Me and I just was completely blown away by it. Adam Silvera has a tendency to write queer, 
boy meets boy romances but with a sort of a twist to them they're often quite sad or quite angsty there's often a sort of a little science fiction or speculative twist to them he's also the author of they both die at the end which i tried to get into i started listening to it and i was really liking it but the content was just dragging me down from an emotional point of view which is in the nature of the book because it says it in the title both the main characters will die at the end of that book and that whole thought process and the thought of knowing that you are going to die on a certain day it wasn't sitting well with my mental state at the time of reading it I would like to give some of Adam Silvera's other books a go I'm very interested in More Happy Than Not that is on my to be read list for at some point in the future very much interested would love to see where his other books go because if I like it anywhere near as much as History is All You Left Me then he's going to be one of my new favourite authors by the end of it next Cassandra Clare another author who has been around on booktube and in the bookish community for as far back as I can remember and certainly as far back as I have been a part of it I have never read a Cassandra Clare book I have very, very little interest in reading a Cassandra Clare book. I know that a lot of people, this is their favourite series. They have read every single book in the series. One of my best friends is obsessed with the trilogy which is set in the past. I forget which one that is. Clockwork Angel, that one, maybe. She's obsessed with that and she loves it. But is it one that I'm going to pick up? I don't see myself reading it anytime soon. Again, I think that'd be quite easy reading, but it's just not one that I'm drawn. Then we have Taylor Jenkins Reid. Sorry, I'm reading off of a list because I couldn't remember what all of the authors were. Taylor Jenkins Reid, author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six doesn't appeal to me very much, um, mostly because, again, it's about songs, it's about um, music industry, and it's not really something that I would gravitate towards. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo appeals to me more from the diversity aspect. I understand that there's LGBTQIA rep in here and that appeals to me. But other than that, the whole sort of just reading about this ageing starlet who's recounting her life it doesn't sound that intriguing to me. I know that so many people have tried to sell this book as really the best thing they've ever read and they give such good descriptions of it but all I just think is it doesn't sound appealing to me, it doesn't sound like something I would enjoy. Lainey Taylor, author of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series and Strange the Dreamer. I have read Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I read it ages ago when it first came out and I did like it at the time, I really enjoyed it but not enough to force me to carry on with the series or to intrigue me to carry on with the series I should say. I never had that pull to pick up the second book or the third book in the series and never returned to that world and now I think it has gone past me and I don't think that I would want to get back into that series. I don't even own um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone anymore. I donated that to a charity shop a long, long time ago and while I enjoyed it at the time, again, the stereotypical YA romance plot of it would put me off a lot now. Now we finally have another book series that I can talk about and that I have adored and actually completed this and that is, if you can see it up here, The Illumini Files by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. I have read the entire trilogy of these, I absolutely adore them. They are a sci-fi young adult series told through mixed media format so it is all done by chat logs and messenger conversations, emails, voice transcripts, all of that. It's an amazing book series to the point where even the things that would normally put me off of a YA series or a YA trilogy such as the romance, I found myself really enjoying that in this format and in this setting because it was so different. I'm just going to put Hedwig back in her little hole up there. I've also heard really great things about the audiobook for the, for the Illumini Files. If and when I ever get a subscription to Audible, it will be probably one of the first that I check out from there because I really want to hear it in that format. It sounds like they do a really good job of. Next, Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I have not read this. Um, I have no particularly strong feelings about this series. It sounds quite intriguing, but I've never actually picked it up. So maybe I will do at some point but it's not one that I've read yet. 
Then we have Sarah J Maas, who has written so many books. Um, the Throne of Glass series is I don't know how many books long, and then she's written Crescent City and The Court of Thorns and Roses. I have read a grand total of one book by Sarah J Maas. I read Throne of Glass ages and ages ago, back when I was on Booktube for the first time. I believe there was only like three, maybe four books out in the series at the time. Read the first one and I didn't see what the hype was about. I just, it was okay. It was entertaining enough. It kept me occupied, but there was nothing standout amazing. I couldn't see what all the fuss was about and I won't be continuing on with that series, and I have no strong interest to pick up any other of Sarah J Maas's books which are currently out. I'm not writing her off as an author. If she wrote something that appealed to me, I would certainly give it a go, because I, f I found it entertaining to read her first book, but it's just not something that I am particularly strongly pulled towards now. Then we have The Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This is one book series that I don't know too much about. Yes, I've heard it talked about, but I don't, I couldn't tell you the plot of this book series. I think it's blurred into one with all of the other book series that I hear around Booktube, and I have nothing to tell you about this series. I don't know why I've not read it. There's no particular reason why I haven't, why it's not something that I've read already, whether I would like it, whether it's even something that appeals to me, I couldn't tell you. I need to go away after this video and look it up and find out what it's all about and if it's one that I do want to put on my to-be-read list. Next, Shannon Maguire. Now, now we're talking. I love Shannon Maguire's works. I have read all of the Wayward Children series, that's just here, all of that up to where we are at the moment in the series and I will continue to read the rest of that series for however long it goes on for. I will be getting them, pre-ordering them, reading them as soon as they come out. One of my favourite series of all time. I've also read some of her other books. Where is it? <laughs> you know, maybe I should have planned this and got the books out in advance. I have also read Discount Armageddon by Shana Maguire. This is part of her, one of her urban fantasy series. I think this is the Encrypted series. I really enjoyed this when I read it. I read this ages ago before I knew who Shannon Maguire was. I wasn't on booktube at the time. I knew nothing about the Wayward Children series but I did love this book. Again, same as with the Holly Black book. Not the most literary or intellectual book that I have ever read but so much fun. I loved the world in this. It was very action-packed. I loved all the mysticism and the magic to it. The only thing that lent it down a little bit was the romance side which is why I think then when I went on to read The Seat, which is Midnight Blue Light Special, I got about halfway in and then just gave up with it. And I think it's because romance plays a much heavier aspect in this one as opposed to the first book. The first book is more of a will they, won't they sexual tension. In this, they're already dating. So it just seems more romance centric and not something that I would be particularly as interested in. That being said, never say never, I may continue this on at some point because I do really love Shannon Maguire's works. I also have a copy of Middle Game, you can't see it on the camera but it's over here. Middle Game is sat there waiting to be read and it's going to be read soon because I really want to continue on with Shannon Maguire's worlds and see what she has written and I hear so many good things about that book from people who have loved the Wayward Children series that I think that that is going to be a no-brainer. I think I'm going to love it. Although that is high expectations for a single book, I probably shouldn't put too much pressure on the poor book, just in case it lets me down. Having to tidy up as I go, where did this book come from? Only two books left on the list now, or two authors less left on the list, and they're going to be quite quick for me to get to, because the, because the penultimate book on this list is the To All The Boys I've Loved Before series by Jenny Han. I've not read it. It's definitely, definitely not my cup of tea. It's contemporary romance, young adult trilogy, not for me. And then we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. And this is, again, one that I know very little about. I think that when I first heard it mentioned, I was intrigued by it. But I couldn't tell you why I was intrigued by it. From what I can see, it's quite a large book. So I would find that personally very intimidating. But there obviously is something about the story that I originally found appealing because it's in my head as one that I think I would like to read at some point. I just haven't done so yet. If you have, let me know briefly what it's about and 
why you think it would appeal let me know so that I can see if it is one to add to the list so that is it that is me done with the book to net all-star challenge as you can see my opinions do differ quite a bit from what other people may have I am not one to just go for the popular books um, or certainly not anymore I know at one point I was very heavily influenced by just buying everything that I saw people talking about online but I think over the years I've managed to narrow down my interests and now I know what's going to appeal to me and what isn't and I would rather just save my time and read something that I would really love. It doesn't stop you from loving those books, it doesn't mean that I judge people for loving those books, it's just that it's not for me, I'd rather spend my time reading something that I really love. I hope that this has let you get to know me a little bit more, has shown you more of my likes and dislikes, what I am likely to pick up in a book and what I am unlikely to pick up in a book. If you have any recommendations for me based on this video, please let me know down below. If there are any of the book series mentioned, which I haven't read, which you think I really, really should, please do let me know, apart from Cruel Prince, because that's never going to happen. Let me know if you think that I should give any of them a second chance or if I should give any of them a first chance, particularly Victoria Schwab. would love to know where to start with her. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I will leave information to the charity website and how you can make donations down below if you so wish. And if you would like to have a go at this tag, please do. I'm not going to tag anybody or link anybody to this because I'm new here and I don't know who's done it, who hasn't done it, who would like to do it, who'd be up for it. So if you'd like to do it, go ahead, have fun. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video too. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!